Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here on Watchbox Reviews. Then I can send my best to your inbox on a daily basis. And if you like our watches, you can see them and you can buy them on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches with over 1,700 posted and available on thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing the FP Journe Santograph Souverain F, the Santograph F, a FP Journe boutique limited edition produced in a application only trickle. This is the Santograph with a healthy dose of Formula One inspired imagery. Let's start with the basics. This is what doesn't change from the standard Santograph to the F, the 40 millimeter case size. The watch has a platinum case that's approximately 10.9 millimeters thick, 40.5 millimeters if you measure the slight overhang of the lip of the bezel. The watch is relatively broad from lug to lug as fitted on this FP Journ factory bracelet. Now if you just measure the lugs, it's going to be 48.5 millimeters across the wrist, but the solid end links of the bracelet extend it generously. 55 millimeters lug to lug gives it an impressive wrist stance, and the look of the watch is transformed not just by the dial, but also by the presence of the five link factory bracelet. More on that in a moment. Now the watch is wonderfully balanced. All of platinum, it has tremendous precious metal pull on the wrist. It's an absolute pleasure to feel because it's ergonomically superb, but yet ever present in the best possible sense. The bracelet itself is an early Journe bracelet design in that it still uses the older flathead screws, the Eleanor Maker's Marks, meaning it was made in France, so it has the French and the Swiss precious metal hallmarks, as well as the Eleanor Maker's Mark, and again, the screws on both sides being flathead rather than the triple indentation halt head screws later used by F.P. Journe. So this is a little bit of a throwback in some ways. The bracelet helps to perfectly counterweight the watch head unit. Now, having a very heavy watch on a strap can sometimes create a little bit of a tendency to move around or want a hula hoop on the wrist. By having the counterweight of a full bracelet and clasp, it's almost like the keel of a sailboat preventing the watch should you wear yours loose from moving around. I like that. Second, it's objectively a great bracelet. You can see the channels between the links are broad and scalloped to avoid pinching skin and pulling hair. You can also see a great deal of daylight coming through from my baseboard, so you get a sense of just how well this bracelet ventilates and aerates the wrist on a hot day. The clasp features a double deploy in action, and you can see internally it is white gold, because white gold is considerably harder than platinum. It's also harder than the other golds. Better to use for the mechanical moving components of the bracelet. Now you'll also note that blazon on top, FP Journe, fully branded. Eleanor was a French case maker just outside of Paris that made FP Journe's early pocket watches, and right up until about 2008, Eleanor also made the cases as well as bracelets and clasps for FP Journe, so that's why you have those dual makers mark and why you have both French and Swiss hallmarks on the watch. And you can see the case is the same way, featuring the double hallmarks of France as well as Switzerland. You can see the Eleanor diamond-shaped makers mark just below my thumb. Now, in terms of the design of the case, it's fluid, contemporary, and yet it has aged well. This case design has been with us since the early 2000s, and the Santograph itself bowed in 2007. So, though it's been around for a while, it's remained fresh. Strong horizontal character lines imparted by the sweep of the integrated blended platinum lugs, as well as the slight overhang of the bezel and the case back, imparting a strong sweep with sharp definition from lug to lug. The bezel is domed and rounded, and the dial is spectacular. Now, you may know that this watch was originally, as a model, Santograph, all versions, inspired by Jean Tot, former principal of Ferrari F1, later FIA president. Well, he's a personal friend of F.P. Journe, as well as a compatriot. They're both French. And the idea originally was to create a chronograph that could measure one one-hundredth of a second, hence Santograph. It took three years, but F.P. Journe got there, and he credited his dear friend. They took it one step farther with a purely Ferrari F1-inspired version of the Santograph, the Santograph F, and that's what you see here. The dial is not Rosa Corsa. It's not the Italian racing red. 
That's almost more of an orange red. This is described by F.P. Jorn as red chrome, and it certainly has that effect. There's a little bit of a metallic shimmer about this red, as well as granular texture to the way the dial is composed. The hands at center are fly yellow, a color commonly used on Ferrari road cars, and the sub-registers themselves are described as black gold with a high polish, or I should say black polished, white gold screw fixed inner bezel. That is a bezel for each of the sub-registers. Now you can also see that the registers move at three distinct speeds. One one hundredth of a second, a twenty second register, and a ten minute register. The Sontograph is designed to measure things going very quickly over short durations. No tachymeter scales on this version. This one is pretty much just a timing organ, not a means of judging speed. However, it still has a clever combination of mono pusher look and dual pusher functionality as you can stop the chronograph and restart it without having to reset it. The rocker system is one of two patents that have been awarded to this design. Okay, moving around the side, the FP Journe crown, a signature piece. It must be withdrawn to an intermediate position to wind this watch. It sets in the outermost position, pretty much just free wheels inboard, and then you set it to the intermediate position and now you can wind the watch. The timepiece also features a rather spectacular reset action as you use the mono pusher to recenter all of the registers. Turning it over, FP Journe manufacture caliber 1506. Let's get a little bit closer now. We can go in depth and in detail. So the watch features a caliber 1506, meaning work started on the movement in 06, 2006. It was a 2007 model year watch, and it is 15 French lean in diameter, hence 1506, 50 joules manual wind, 80 hour power reserve courtesy of the prominent centrally mounted barrel. It has two separate drivetrains. One drives off the barrel arbor, one drives off the barrel itself, and by splitting the power to the chronograph and the civil time-telling functions into two separate drivetrains, F.P. Journe is able to retain all amplitude, that is, there's no loss of timing precision, while running the chronograph. There is one drawback, and that comes naturally with two drivetrains. You draw down the power faster, and thus the watch will run for 24 hours with the chronograph engaged, 80 hours with the chronograph disengaged, manually wound, Given that the largest register on the dial is 10 minutes, you don't have to worry about running this one for 24 hours unless you desire the pleasure. You'll also note that the movement is entirely 18 karat rose gold with a number of different finishes. A circular Cote de Genève across the bridge is perfectly aligned. Each bridge has a nicely beveled edge as well as nicely beveled jewel countersinks, and there is a perlage across the base plate below the balance. The balance beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and it is free sprung for precision of adjustment as well as shock resistance after the fact. Beautifully executed and an F.P. Journe original. I love the fact that the movement was self-consciously styled, that is, designed to look good. Not simply engineered and not simply finished, but there is a logic to this architecture from the crown to the crown wheel to the barrel to the balance. It's a beautifully composed work of engineering. Now, these are scarce. Production, perhaps single digits per year. It's not a limited edition, but given that we've seen Omega limited editions in the five figures, maybe not. that's not the best yardstick or bar for measuring scarcity. This is a piece through the boutique, by application, rarely issued. A truly special piece, and with the old style bracelet, bracelet end plates, and the old Eleanor French case, this is also an unobtainable discontinued reference, even if you were to apply today, you would not get this exact watch from F.P. Journe. Fortunately, you can see it and buy it on our website.